the weather all over the country here has been wacky. It's 115 degrees in one place. It's raining, pouring rain, and people losing their homes in, in other areas. Oh, Chris, tell me about it. The weather in the UK is bloody awful as well. Feels like we're never going to have another sunny day. The one thing I have a problem with only one thing? You sure about that, pal? I mean, if it isn't flat Earth, it's fake space. And if it isn't fake space, it's the moon landing being fake. But anyway, I'm a gentleman, so I'll ask. What do you have a problem with today? Please subscribe. And the one thing I don't understand... Again, you're gonna have to be a little more specific. Because if your video serves to prove anything, it's that you don't understand anything. How a politician could come out and start pushing um, climate change on all of us. Of course you don't think climate change is real. I mean, why would you? As I just said, you don't believe that the Earth is a globe. You don't believe that space is real. So why the hell would you believe that climate change is real? Go on then, let's hear these words of wisdom. Why isn't climate change real? When we only have records of 200 plus years, now, by we, I'm guessing you mean the good old US of A. Yeah, you may only have records for the last 200 years, and I could be mistaken you, but without doing any research myself, I would imagine that's because America wasn't America until September the 9th, 1776. Because in the UK, we've got weather records going back to the mid-1600s, whereas America didn't have regular weather observations which were collected and recorded until 1849 with roughly 150 stations, which rapidly grew to 600 stations by 1860. The USA is a long way behind Europe in weather observations, I must say. Whatever. Real records, we only have 200 plus years, okay? Everybody's screaming climate change. Oh, it's a hot day, climate change. It's raining too hard, climate change. There's a tornado here, climate change, all right? Now, the last decade has seen huge leaps forward in the field known as extreme event attribution science, which uses statistics and climate models to detect global warming's impact on weather disasters. The extreme drought in California and Nevada in 2021, that was six times more likely to have been caused because of climate change. No. There are planes up there that are spraying the skies, okay? And they know how everything works up there when it comes down to air pressure, okay? Well, the only thing planes are spraying in the skies are contrails or vapor trails, which are line-shaped clouds produced by aircraft engine exhausts or changes in air pressure, typically at aircraft cruising altitudes several miles above the Earth's surface. Contrails are composed primarily of water in the form of ice crystals. And fun fact, airplane wings are shaped to make air move faster over the top of the wing. When air moves faster, the pressure of the air decreases. So the pressure on top of the wing is less than the pressure on the bottom of the wing. The difference in pressure creates a force on the wing that lifts the wing up into the air. So you did get one thing right, pal. The people who fly planes do know a lot about air pressure because it's what keeps planes from falling out of the sky, you knob. So they can manipulate a storm, a tornado, say. They can make it go in a place that they want it to go. And they can remove it if they wanted to remove it. Well, okay, let's explore that then, shall we? Because if that was true, then wouldn't we always have perfect weather? And I don't mean always sunny. I mean it would be sunny when we need it to be sunny. And it would rain when we need it to rain. But knowing CC like I do, because I've made so many videos about him, I would guess that his explanation will be a lot more sinister than that. So let's see why he thinks weather can be controlled. I'm sure it'll make perfect sense. Just like if a heavy storm came in, they could probably get rid of it or make it mild, but they don't. They make it worse because they hate you. <laughs> That's the thing. They hate you. Just, ow, just as I thought. They make the weather worse because they hate us. Now, is that all of us or just conspiracy theorists? 
And is it just the American government that hates us all or all the governments of the world? You do realise, Chris, that America isn't the entire planet, don't you? I mean, I know that you have the World Series of Baseball where only American teams compete. I know Canada do as well. Shut up. Spoiling my point. But that doesn't mean that America is actually the entire world. Um, anyway. But I, I'm just, you know, this whole climate change shit. Look, I, 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 I admit, the storms are getting worse. On, so you believe that climate change is a thing, but where does normal people understand that it's our fault because we are literally destroying our own planet? You aren't saying the climate change isn't real, just that it's being done on purpose by aeroplanes. But we have all of these little weather stations all over the place. Okay, and if you look carefully, when a storm comes in, it creates this big strike. Do you mean cirrus vibratus clouds? which are often aligned with the high altitude wind direction, making for white parallel stripes which streak across the sky. No, not that type of streak, eh? And you can tell where that weather station is. You know, these little weather towers or whatever you want to call them. Just follow the uh, line. Weather stations measure a large variety of different meteorological parameters, including air temperature, Atmospheric pressure, rainfall, wind speed and direction, humidity, I meant humidity, cloud height and visibility. So it would make sense that these weather stations are positioned where the weather is happening, or as close to it as possible. Now, I know you won't like this, Chris, or believe it, but due to the spherical shape of Earth, we kind of know the weather patterns for certain regions. For example, people who live in Thailand know that they have a monsoon season every single year without fail, so yeah. Uh, the radar on, on, uh, on, on my thing, <clears throat> red is bad, green is okay, it's just moderate stuff. Yellow is, it's about to get bad. Um, there's always this little hue of green around these, these little weather things. I want to call them weather modification towers. Come on, CC, don't be shy. We all know that's exactly what you want to call them, but sorry, pal, they are not weather modification towers. Towel? <laughs> but sorry, pal, they are not weather modification towers. I don't know what happened then. Speaking seems difficult today. I think that's where our climate change is coming from. What, from weather stations? Really? Is it possible you could explain your hypothesis to us? Or is this just another CC video where all you do is claim something is fake and offer absolutely no other explanation? This is a picture of a weather station in your home state. And it just looks like some instruments to me. Unless, of course, the guts of the operation are hidden underground and covertly run by a weather changing race of mole people. If you're told something, do you believe it? Oh, hell, that very much depends on who told me what and whether or not they are adequately qualified to be telling me that thing, whatever it may be. And if I have any doubts, I look it up for myself and then verify the information I just read from a few different sources. Why'd you ask? Isn't that what flat earthers do? Or do they just hear a person saying a thing and then instantly believe it because it fits perfectly with what they already believe? Oh wait, no, it wouldn't be that, would it? That would just be confirmation bias, wouldn't it? And only an idiot believes something that there is no proof for. Isn't that right, CC? Hmm? Like if I told you mountains are created because of continental drift, would you believe it? Only if that's what the supporting evidence says, which in this case it does. Tectonic plates rest upon the convecting mantle, which causes them to move. The movements of these plates can account for noticeable geological events such as earthquakes and volcanic eruption, and more subtle yet sublime events like the building of mountains. So yeah, if somebody told me that, then I would believe them. Well, because you've been told in school about that, right? Hmm, okay. Well, yes and no, but like I said, I wouldn't just believe it. That's not really how most people work. Unless someone is known to be an authority on a particular topic, then only an idiot would believe them on faith alone. I can't really see what you're getting at. But when you start talking like this, there's usually a poorly placed aha moment. So let's hear it. All right. School's bullshit. Sir, to lie to you. 
Well, duh, obviously you'd think that. Now, is school there to lie to you because that's just what they do? No, it isn't. Or is school there to lie to you because the things we get taught in schools are based in reality and not in the things that you believe or don't believe? Whichever way you want to put it, there's a really good reason they don't teach flat earth in schools. And call me Captain Obvious, but it's because the earth isn't flat. Because in school, you learn about planets. You learn about this spinning wet ball. Uh, yeah, in school, kids learn things that will allow them to understand the world we live in and how to be a functioning and contributing member of society. It sounds like your ideas around education involve not being educated at all. And the spinning web ball line is getting really old and boring, pal. It's an ablate spheroid that rotates once in 24 hours. And without it, we wouldn't have day or night or summer and winter. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with asking questions and in some cases offering an alternative explanation. But when everything you know comes from not believing anything you're told, then that's a problem. See, those are lies. You don't live on that, okay? There's not a single picture we have of this spinning wet ball out in space. That's accurate. That hasn't been stitched together. So the Himawari satellite, all fake. The live feed we can see from the ISS, also fake. The pictures we have from the moon landing, fake again. And I'll hazard a guess and say that when we land on the moon again in 2024, all of those pictures will be fake as well? I mean, for crying out loud, even the guy who did it it mix it. It's Photoshop because it has to be does not mean that the images we have of Earth are fake, Chris. Get a basketball, put it on your kitchen table, if your wife will let you stay in the house that long. And try and take a picture of it from every angle without moving yourself. You can't do that. And that's all he meant when he said it's Photoshop because it has to be. And the famous Earthrise picture, which isn't Photoshopped, is fake as well then, according to Flat Earthers. Isn't it funny that every picture we have of Earth is somehow fake? Which I'm positive has nothing to do with the fact that each one of those pictures shows us all how incredibly stupid Flat Earth belief is. All just CGI and camera tricks. And yet without fail and with 100% accuracy, Every time a flat earth believer tries to prove that the earth is flat, they somehow end up demonstrating that the earth is exactly what we all know it to be, a glow. Interesting. I especially like that one picture of Brazil on one side of the uh, um, spinning wet ball, the ball. Where are all the other continents? See this? My shocked face. A flat earther referencing an image and not showing us that image? Well, okay, I'll look at it myself then, CC. Well, would you look at that? I can see two straight away. Africa and North America. You did zoom out on the image you looked at, Chris, didn't you? <laughs> Turkey. They fit all on the other side. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, does it? Nothing you say makes any sense, mate. And I don't know why you're laughing. You aren't special. Well, not in the way you think you are, anyway. Special officer do if you're reporting. You don't have any secret knowledge. All you do is completely misunderstand pretty much everything. Laugh, swear, and scream fake without ever offering a better explanation. What is it MC Toon says? You've got to lie to Fleur? Well, yes, you have. Haven't you, Chris? Oh, man. All these fake pictures and people don't see it. They don't even look real. When you have eyes to see this and you look at all of these pictures of this blue marble. Hell, you have it on your phone right now. Look at it. I don't because I'm not an iPhone weirdo. No offense, iPhone user. <laughs> but the famous image of Earth that comes preloaded on iPhones isn't actually a photograph of Earth. It's just a visualization of the Earth to be used as a screensaver on an iPhone, which explains why so many flat earthers pick on that particular image. You really have got to try harder. Look how pathetic it looks. Do you believe that's what you live on? But you're talking about a phone screensaver, you idiot. And do flat earthers and moon landing deniers really believe that if the moon landing was faked and the earth was flat, and evil NASA are just faking it for the billions of dollars of funding they receive? Has it never occurred to you that they would have done a much better job 
For example, when you all shout, aha, why are there no stars? You don't think that if the images of the Earth were fake because it's actually flat, NASA wouldn't have thought to themselves, hey lads, we better throw some stars in this image to stop everyone from finding us out and make it more convincing. If anything, there being no stars in the image shows us it's a real image because that's just how camera lenses work. Hmm? I don't know. You were told mountains exist. When I say mountains are fake, I mean that they're not what you've learned. Well, that's a new one, even for me. Now, mountains are fake? Why, though? Now, we all know that there would be absolutely no point in faking the shape of the Earth. So why, pray tell, are mountains now fake? That you think they are. They could be tree trunks. Who knows? Look at Devil Tower. Look at Devil's Tower. You're gonna tell me a volcano made that? Um, I'm not gonna tell you anything. And even if I did, you wouldn't believe it. So why waste my time? But for those who are interested, the simplest explanation is that the Devil's Tower is a small intrusive body formed by magma which cooled underground and was later exposed by erosion. However, some geologists disagree on the exact details of how the magma intruded and solidified, and the formation of the Devil's Tower is estimated to have occurred around 50 million years ago. I hope that helps. See what I did there, Chris? It's called being honest. Not all of science agrees on how the tower was formed, but that certainly doesn't make it a tree stump. Doesn't take very long for things to petrify, you know that? You know, they find artifacts from WW2 that have been petrified. I can't verify or refute that. There just isn't any information to be had. But the average time it takes wood to petrify is between five and 10,000 years. So unless you have some sort of citation for that claim, I'm guessing that we'd just be moving on. Or not. Thank you to these lovely people who all lit the super thanks button on the last video. Galactic Vagabond 9772, OG Yeti, Quarter Speed 1655, Lisa Bourbon, Tim Kosham A730, UKPI, Steph, Relaxed Bad Knee Adventures, and the Golden Skeptic. You're all awesome. Don't forget, if you are able to support what I do here on the channel, all the ways you can help are listed below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Love you, bye. It, 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 it. That's all, folks. Alright, alright, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.